Good evening and welcome to the City of Woodstock planning, uh, public planning meeting. Tonight's meeting is an open public meeting as required by the Planning Act. This meeting is for information and discussion purposes only and no decisions will be made this evening. Council will make a decision on these matters at the regular council meeting to be held this Thursday. If you wish to address council at that meeting, you must submit a delegation form to the city clerk no later than 2 p.m. on Tuesday. A delegation form is available on the city website or can be obtained this evening from our deputy clerk who's sitting beside me. If you wish to comment at tonight's meeting, you must do so from the podium. Please refrain from uh, providing comments from the gallery. Only comments provided at the podium will be recorded in the minutes and you must provide your name and address for the public record before giving comments. There will be a five minute limit on those speaking for or against an application. We ask that you sign in at the back for the appropriate application if you wish to receive formal notice of council's decision of the matter. The notice will uh, provide further information on appealing the decision. The planner will be asked to present a planning report for each application. The appli applicant will then be provided an opportunity to make comments followed by those wishing to speak in favor of the application and then followed by those wishing to speak in opposition to the application. And our first application tonight is uh, B. 22-84-8, B22-85-8, B22-86-8, and ZN8-22-16, application for consent and zone change, Arnold Spina and Luke Welsh. I'll call on our planner, Mr. Gilbert, to uh, present the application. There we go. Uh, these are applications for consent and zone change uh, affecting property at the uh, southwest corner of Admiral and Graham Street. Uh, this application was previously deferred uh, at the February uh, City Council meeting to allow the applicant to look into some alternative options. Uh, the application has been revised uh, so that the original application had uh, the existing four unit townhouse being split into individual units plus an additional uh, new vacant lot being created in the back. Uh, staff had concerns about uh, parking as the uh, four units couldn't provide the required parking, as well as a neighbor had had some comments about intensification uh, and parking uh, conflicts. Uh, the applicant has worked with uh, staff to revise the proposal. Uh, so now uh, there's still the four units to be separately divided, uh, but there'll be parking spaces in the backyard, uh, two for each unit, and there'll be appropriate easements included so that uh, each uh, of the owners has access uh, to the rear, uh, rear parking spaces. Uh, the requested, the number of variances requested is, is significantly reduced. Uh, the only the only special provision required uh, is to reduce the minimum lot frontage for an end unit from eight meters to 6.9 meters. Um, the existing building location that's considered to be uh, legal non-complying uh, related to front yard depth, interior and ex exterior side yard widths and staff recommend that the proposed amended uh, zoning bylaw include that relief. Uh, staff are of the opinion that the proposal uh, satisfies the official plan criteria for uh, infill development and uh, staff recommend approval of the application subject uh, to the noted conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions from council to the planner? Hearing none, is the applicant here and would you like to come forward if you are anyone here? Is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor of this application? 
Is there anyone here who would like to speak against this application? Hearing none, we'll continue. So the next application, ZN8-22-20, application for zone change, McCowan and Associates Limited, 645 Dundas Street. Thank you. This zone change seeks to amend the minimum floor area provisions of the C5-1 zone uh, to reduce the floor area from 418 square meters to 92.9 square meters. Uh, the applicant has submitted a site plan application, which has been reviewed by uh, city and county staff and is uh, ready to be approved pending the, uh, pending the approval of this zone change application. Uh, there are two two buildings proposed, uh, a, a eating establishment with a drive through to the south and a commercial building with uh, smaller floor spaces uh, on the east. The existing uh, provisions uh, requiring the 418 square meter uh, floor area, uh, they aren't act, they aren't supported or they weren't required by any uh, planning market study. Um, generally, you would see these floor caps on commercial areas outside of the downtown area uh, where you want to ensure that the units are large enough uh, that they um, don't directly compete with the downtown. Uh, in this case, the, the property is uh, within the central area of the city. Uh, it's a unique site because it is uh, very large, very much larger than you would typically see. Uh, for for a downtown site, um, the original for the original restriction uh, was carried forward from the 1980 uh, city zoning bylaw. Uh, so staff haven't been able to determine where it originally came from, uh, but it was uh, reinstituted in uh, 2013 uh, when city council uh, 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 required that minimum floor area in response to concerns raised by the BA at the time. Uh, in this instance, staff are of the, the opinion that the uh, proposal is appropriate as the lands are within the central business district and uh, development in the, in the central business district includes a full range of com commercial uses um, without the typical requirement to require a market impact study uh, or without any restrictions on the size of particular retail or service oriented uses. Uh, Staff, typically you would not see a drive-through uh, in the downtown area. However, there is one uh, directly across the street uh, at the uh, KFC restaurant. And uh, the property has gone through, the project has gone through site plan approval and city staff are satisfied that the proposed drive-through will work and is appropriate. Uh, given this, staff recommend approval of the application. Thank you. Are there any questions from council? Councillor Thank you through the chair and my apologies for being a couple minutes late. Um, uh, through to Mr. Gilbert. Um, you mentioned in 2013 BIA had some concerns. Was that for this site in particular? I'm just curious. Uh, it was. Uh, there was a, another proposal for a retail uh, storefront or a redevelopment like this. Okay. Um, and planning staff didn't recommend uh, any minimum floor caps, but uh, city council at that time uh, chose to include them in the zoning ballot. Okay, then I'm just curious. I know we deferred this before to make sure BIA had read and no concerns were brought forward at all. We didn't Is receive any response to a circulation request from the BIA. Okay, and I don't know about everybody else here, but I know I'm being asked a lot what's going in here. Can we share any more on that or? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I saw the signs, but yeah. <laughs> but it is, is it confirmed who's going in there and is that shareable? To be honest, I haven't uh, reviewed the site plan. I don't know if the no. uh, uh, chief building official, if he has any information on it. Not yet. Okay. Just seems to be the biggest question I get these days on this site. So thank you. <laughs> I said I would ask. Are there any other questions from council? Uh, Councillor Schattenberg.
yeah, I believe my mic's working now from the uh, chair through to uh, planner. I guess my best question is that based on, on the size of the second building, the secondary building, not the one that's the drive through restaurant, but the other building and the square footage is projected for that building. Is there anything in that C5 zoning whatsoever that would exclude them from having certain uses? Um, I'm thinking um, I'm thinking specifically of a of a BIA downtown use like like a men's store or, or a women's clothing store or or shoe store or something like that based on again the square footage of of the of those units on the C5 zoning. See, Madam Chair, no, there's no restrictions on uses on this site, so it's just specifically that floor area minimum. Any other questions of council? Thank you. Is the applicant, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Council Wheaton. My apologies. You looked at me, I didn't have my hand up and then you turned to look back. So through the chair, um, I have some concerns about traffic. Um, this parking lot is difficult to turn in and out of currently. Uh, and so adding density to that, uh, to especially drive-through traffic. Um, was, has this been addressed at site plan control or um, in, in, in the zone? Like here today, how has that been addressed? I believe city staff have looked at the site plan and are ready to sign off on it. I don't know if a traffic study was submitted. Um, like I said, I didn't work on the site plan, but uh, city staff are in a position to approve it. So they are satisfied as appropriate. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Is the applicant uh, present? Yes, yes, would you like to uh, come up and speak to the application or is everything okay? Sure. Could we have your name and address, please? Sure. Seb Baptista. And I'm with the, uh, the owner, so uh, McCowan and Associates out of Barry. Thank you. And uh, first of all, thank you very much. Um, to answer your question, uh, the drive-through is, uh, we have a lease signed with Taco Bell. That's what we'll be going in the drive-through unit. Uh, we only have uh, one other lease signed with a food supplement store for the, uh, uh, the multi-building unit. Uh, the other two are vacant at this time. Uh, we have some active tenants that are going in there. Uh, we did do a parking uh, review of the parking allocation. I want to say that uh, we had ample parking there, but uh, don't quote me on that. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I believe we did. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a couple of these in my head going on right now. Uh, I'm open to answer any other questions if anybody has any. Are there any questions from uh, any council members? Uh, Mayor uh, Chioni. Thank you through the chair and, and not really a, a question. I just thank you for confirming it's a Taco Bell. It's amazing how many people have been asking me that. So I'm glad it's, <laughs> so thank you. That's all. For sure, glad yeah. you're here tonight. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone who would like to speak against the application? Hearing none, thank you. The next application is B23-08-8, application for consent, Ben Sitter Company, Inc., and it's for 366 Mill Street. Thank you. This is a severance application um, on the west side of the city. Uh, the subject property fronts on Mill Street. Uh, the property is designated or designated low density residential and zoned R1 in the city zoning bylaw. The proposed lot to be severed would uh, accommodate a future single attached dwelling uh, with a single attached dwelling uh, present on the lot to be remain, uh, retained. Uh, there was one concern uh, raised uh, from an adjacent neighbor about uh, an access easement that exists on the property. Uh, he, they had concern about how the severance would impact uh, their easement that they have on title. Um, and the answer is that easement won't be impacted by the severance. The, uh, the applicant hasn't applied for a discharge of the easement 
that so the easement will be carried forward and the applicant uh, will have to accommodate the easement when they uh, submit the plans for the single attached dwelling. Uh, overall staff were satisfied that the proposal meets the uh, infill uh, tests in the official plan uh, for infill severances in existing residential areas and staff recommend approval subject to the seven noted conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions from council? Hearing none, um, is the applicant uh, or representative here? Yes, would you like to come forward please and uh, give your name please? And the address? Yeah, Daryl Holmes, 228 Boot Hill Road. Uh, I think it speaks for itself, very straightforward. Is there any questions that, from council to the applicant? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here in the um, audience who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this application? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on. So the next application is B22 97 8. A22-21-8, application for consent and minor variance, Rose and Adele Figlio, Figlio Mini. Hopefully I haven't screwed that up too much. And it's for 77 Metcalf Street. Uh, this is, these are applications to create a res residential lot uh, for a single detached dwelling and retain uh, a lot uh, which would include the existing single attached dwelling on the property. Uh, the applicants also requested uh, minor variances uh, to reduce the uh, lot depth, a uh, lot area uh, for the uh, lot to be severed and lot to be retained, as well as uh, to reduce the required lot frontage uh, for the severed uh, severed property. Uh, the property is located at 77 Metcalf, Metcalf Street. Uh, the Property is designated entrepreneurial district, uh, and it's zoned uh, C3 in the city zoning bylaw. Uh, the proposed uh, lot to be severed and retained. Uh, the, the variances are noted in the report. Uh, staff have uh, re reviewed the uh, requested minor variances are satisfied that they are generally appropriate. Uh, there'll still be adequate space for amenity areas, access, uh, parking, and uh, lot grading and drainage. Uh, staff have not received any uh, comments from any uh, adjacent landowners at the time of uh, writing the report. And overall staff are satisfied that the proposal meets the official plan policy for new info development as this area has a quite a mix of lot sizes and lot fabrics and the proposed uh, lot to be started and lot to be retained will fit within that um, variety of lot, uh, lot sizes and fabrics and uh, staff. I do not believe there'll be any co compatibility issues. Uh, and as such, we recommend approval of the application uh, subject to the noted six conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from uh, council? No, hearing none. Uh, the applicant, would you like to come forward to speak to this? And your name and address. Please. Hi, I am Adele Filiamani. I am representing the owner Rosa Filiamani. And um, there weren't any comments. I had a whole slew of things to go through, but uh, basically we are requesting a severance of uh, a piece of land that she does have. Some comments were raised um, with regards to um, the width of the frontage. Um, we had applied for the nine meter minimum frontage, but building department had come back to us. So we had revised our drawings in order to have the 8.5 minimum, which is why we have a minor variance for the frontage. With regards to the depth of the lot, due to its depth, we cannot achieve the area requirement. Um, therefore, the minor variance is for the area as well. Um, other than that, um, we have met all the setback requirements. And um, I believe we've uh, replied to all their questions and comments and we have their approval. So hopefully we have council approval. Thank you. Are there any questions through to the applicant? 
Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who is in, uh, would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak against this application? Thank you. Hearing none, we'll go on to the next one. Is application OP22-28-8 and ZN8-22-23 application for official plan amendment and zone change 2733153 Ontario Inc. and 2774487 Ontario Inc. 215 Raglan Street. Go ahead. Uh, so th these are uh, applications for official plan amendment and zone change uh, to replace the existing uh, five unit a multiple attached dwelling house with a new three-story multiple attached dwelling house that would accommodate eight residential units. Uh, the requested zone change would rezone the property from R2 to a special R3 zone, and there'd be special provisions to recognize the existing lot frontage on Raglan Street, as well as to recognize the location and setback of the existing driveway. Uh, the property is is its unique shape property. It's uh, 0.3 acres in size, and as noted, it contains an existing uh, legal non-conforming dwelling uh, with five residential units. Uh, it's proposed that this building will be replaced with an, a new building, uh, three stories in size with uh, eight units. Uh, the proposal does provide all the required parking and visitor parking. Uh, no relief is required from any of the other setbacks. Uh, staff note that the existing uh, density of the site is already medium density residential. If you look at the existing uh, eight units, um, that's a net density of 41.6 units per hectare. Uh, and then the three additional units would raise that to 66 units per hectare. Uh, but both of those, both the 41 and the 66 are both well within the medium density range. Uh, as As such, staff don't have concerns with the proposed redesignation. The uh, requested zone change staff are recommending approval of, as it will recognize the existing driveway uh, access. Uh, and really there's no other alternatives to widen that or provide a greater access uh, that would meet the zoning provisions. Uh, as well, uh, staff note that this project, uh, in light of the recent changes to Bill 23, uh, would be exempt from site plan approval as it's less than 10 units. Uh, however, the applicant will still have to provide uh, information for servicing and other matters uh, through the building permit process, uh, as well as uh, confirmation that the uh, pro uh, property meets the entire building code provisions respecting uh, access for firefighting purposes. In light of this, staff recommend approval or recommend uh, support of the official plan amendment and approval and principle of the zone change application. Thank you. Are there any questions of council? Councillor Schadenberg? Yeah, from the chair through the planner, I guess the first question is with eight units, what's the mathematical calculation just as clarification for the amount of parking spots that are required for eight units? Uh, I'd be in the comments. 12, 12 parking spaces, I believe, uh, plus a visitor space. Uh, related question. If this is gonna be a three-story unit with uh, eight apartments within it, and there's a full basement as what's noted in the diagram drawings, none of the actual residential spaces will be in the basement, will it? Or will the basement simply be like storage lockers or laundry or something? I'll have to defer to the applicant and the CBO. I'm not exactly clear on the uh, living space arrangements, but it'll be in compliance with the building code. I don't know if Craig gave a comment. Madam Chair, through to the question, yes, uh, hopefully the applicants here, um, typically through zone changes, we don't really look at uh, what the use of the basement is, but construction has to comply to the requirements of the building code. Mayor Accioni. Thank you, through the chair to uh, Mr. Gilbert. Um, 
I just want to make sure this is correct. Uh, I'm just reading the report and it says an existing building has an area of uh, 3,315 square feet and the ground floor area of the new proposed building is 2,305 feet. So does that mean the building footprint itself is smaller than what's existing and it's just taken up extra parking, I assume? Is that, I'm getting a nod behind you. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't a misprint or something that, no, the footprint is getting smaller. And it's why more parking there. there's an additional floor on the building yeah, yes, of course uh, yeah. understand that it was a parking pages. concern i had when driving by it didn't look like there'd be a whole lot but if the footprint is being that much smaller so thank you are there any other questions thank you would the applicant like to come forward and state your name and address please uh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, good evening uh, to the chair, members of council. My name is Caroline Baker. I'm a land use planner with uh, Baker Planning Group uh, representing the applicants this evening. Um, if possible, I believe I had sent in a presentation. I'm not sure if it's, was it right? Sorry, I just might know where to. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll let you. You might be the expert on this computer system. Thank you. Show. There we go. We'll get there. Thank you. Um, and certainly I'll try to clarify a few of the questions uh, from a few moments ago. Um, so just a little bit of background information. Um, the owner of the property is JH Prosperity Development, uh, Zachary Janskar, who's local uh, to the city of Woodstock. Uh, in terms of the uh, consulting team, it's myself uh, with respect to planning. Uh, they hired SPH Engineering uh, to confirm sufficient municipal services, uh, and they retained our RITS architects uh, to prepare the full architectural uh, package as part of the submission. Uh, I think Mr. Gilbert provided an excellent overview of the site. Uh, did just want to note that the site is on a bus route, uh, bus route number seven. Uh, it's almost immediately adjacent uh, to an existing park uh, and certainly proximate uh, to the core area of the city of Woodstock. I did just want to spend a little bit of time on the development uh, concept. Uh, certainly many changes with uh, Bill 109 and Bill 23 as it relates uh, to planning that we're all working within, um, but uh, the owners uh, did uh, prepare the concept plan and apply and uh, looked for this application before that uh, legislation, uh, certainly had retained architects to prepare a conceptual uh, site plan. So while site plan uh, would not be required if this is approved, uh, the owner has considered all of those site plan matters like access, garbage, accessible parking, snow storage, uh, those have been taken into consideration uh, to ensure that the site uh, is sufficiently assized to accommodate the proposed number of dwelling units. Uh, certainly, uh, was a correct comment, the existing building is larger uh, on the site, um, and if you've had a chance to drive by, the parking is certainly not formalized, um, as it would be uh, with this current uh, development concept. So the access is maintained from Raglan Street, and it'll connect uh, to the 12 uh, parking spaces, plus one visitor, uh, complying with the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Uh, there is also accessible parking, outdoor amenity area. Uh, for clarification, and I'm going to switch over in a minute to the building elevations, the intent at this point, um, because it's three stories, um, but there is the below grade units, so because there's eight units, there's two per floor. They're all generally two bedrooms, similar layout, two floors times the three and a half uh, gets us to the, the eight units. Uh, this is just a little image of the proposed site design within the air photo context. It's not 100% perfect um, with my editing skills, but close enough just to see in terms of the fit with the buildings uh, that surround the site. Uh, these are the conceptual building elevations prepared uh, by the architect. Uh, you'll see the uh, first two or two and a half stories are a masonry product, um, and then we move um, into a siding, uh, sort of in a central banding to give some delineation and the top floor. Uh, the intent of the top floor being a, a lighter material and color is again to, to kind of minimize the height so your eye is drawn to the lower floors. And of course, every unit uh, has a balcony uh, in addition to the common amenity area. Uh, as noted, uh, there's two applications before you this evening. Uh, the first is the official plan from low density uh, to medium density, and I believe that was summarized well. And the zoning bylaw is to uh, move the site to an R3. 
as noted, uh, the development does comply with all regulations except the access, uh, which is an existing condition, and the buffering. Um, but certainly the owner is committed to providing fencing um, to those area neighbors from a buffing, buffering perspective, minimize overlook and uh, privacy. Servicing, uh, run through really quickly, but there's existing services in the municipal roads. They have capacity. Um, laterals will have to be replaced because they are dated um, and certainly not in um, the condition they would hope for. So that'll be certainly to the owner. And of course, stormwater management uh, will be addressed uh, through the building permit to ensure uh, that uh, any pre-development flows, so how the water flows today, um, is what will occur um, post-construction. And lastly, I apologize. I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, I feel like I'm the only one left in here. Uh, <laughs> Um, so as part of the submission, we did prepare a planning justification uh, letter. Uh, what it certainly focused on, of course, uh, the provincial policy statement, whether it's appropriate uh, and in the public interest. Uh, the uh, Woodstock official plan does contain criteria uh, for redesignating or locating medium density uh, properties uh, within the city. And it was our opinion that this development conformed to those criteria. The lotting pattern exists. There are no changes to lotting pattern. The overall height is currently uh, permitted. There's access to services, access to amenities um, that are available to um, those future residents. Um, I did want to note, of course, it's probably not a surprise, but this would be a rental um, product um, that they would be offering. I think that's about it, but certainly happy to go back to the concept, answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councillor Schattenberg? Yeah, from the chair through to our uh, applicant. I guess, the, is the five plex that's currently there, is it vacant? Uh, through the chair, uh, my understanding uh, is that there are some tenants, but I don't believe it's fully occupied. And their leases will have expired by the time the construction starts? Uh, they will either have to expire um, or have been given notice. I'm certainly not um, a Landlord Act expert, but they will be required to follow that protocol. Thank you. Are there any other? Uh, Councillor Leatherborough. Through you, Chair. That was uh, similar to my question, was that I drove by yesterday and there's still people living in there. So just, um, I guess the follow-up is just what happens to those people. I mean, if, if things passed and, and this was demolished, um, do you know of any communication if they would be trying to rent these new spaces, the tenants now? Uh, through the chair, uh, certainly I can speak to the owner. I would make an assumption, but I don't like to make assumptions, so I can confirm and make sure I have that answer for you on Thursday. Um, but my assumption in speaking with him is they would be offered um, a unit in the new building. Councillor Wheaton. Thank you, through the chair. Can you also find out from the applicant uh, what is the plan to house those individuals in the meantime during construction? <clears throat> Thank you. Of course, I apologize to the chair, of course, yes. Are there any other questions, uh, Mayor Accioni? Thank you, through the chair to the applicant. Um, just, is there any, um, I guess, has there been any conversations for subsidized or any other type of housing alternatives through this, or is this just a private um, building itself? I know the, County's looking at partners to go in and look at different buildings. So I don't know if that option has been discussed at all with the owners. Uh, through the chair, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this would be a market rental property, but I think it's very helpful information that I can pass on. Um, when we look at rental rates, I'm sure you're all very much aware of the changing definitions. Mm -hmm. um, some of them we don't have fully yet. So we have the new affordable definition. We're certainly waiting for the what I'll call the quantitative version of the attainable housing. Given what we're seeing, these may fall in the attainable range, but I'm certainly happy if there's work that the county is doing, I'm happy to pass that information back to the owner um, as an option to consider. Oh, please do. Whenever it looks, I know they're looking to be involved in as many projects as possible to mm -hmm. open up more opportunities. Two bedroom, I would think might be a prime candidate. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I guess I can't ask if there's anyone in favor or anyone against. <laughs> so, with that, um, 
the uh, and there's no action taken on these uh, items tonight at this meeting. We'll always look back um, on Thursday at seven o'clock. So with that, if there's no other questions or discussion, I'll call for an adjournment. Uh, Councillor Wismer Van Meer and Councillor Schattenberg. All on, I don't think we have to do. All in favor? I'm sure. Um,